tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are author Mark Baer and actress Ellen Gear. Actress Ellen Gear is the daughter of actor Will Gear, who played Grandpa on the Waltons. She was born in New York and attended 14 different schools on the East Coast. <laughs> She's an actor, director, and writer, who now ha holds the title of Artistic Director of the Theatricum Botanicum in Topanga Canyon. We've seen her on the stage, usually the classics, in films, Patriot Games, Harold and Maude, Kung Fu the Movie, on TV, The Waltons, of course, L.A. Law, Star Trek, just to give you an idea of all the things Ellen's uh, done. But tell me, what was this 14 school thing? Oh, it was after, well, you know, uh, when my dad was blacklisted, um, we sort of had to move oh, in order to happened? survive. Yes, so we would go from place to place and try and get a job and try and make a life because my mother was an artist and, and, and pop. So that's what happened to us. Oh, that's why you yeah. were going. I thought it was before he had gotten to that blacklist. No, page. no, it was after. So, we had so a, he didn't stay in Hollywood then? Oh, no, no, no. He went back to New York and he began his uh, theater career again, thanks to John Hausman, who opened the doors and, and helped him again. And we just moved around. The rest of the family moved around trying to trying to find a place to land. How big was your family? There were three children. So your, your mother was an artist yeah, and Mama's also a, an actress? Yes, yes, she, yes, she was. Yeah. So was she looking for work as well? Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> isn't that what we Americans do? We work. <laughs> we work. Did you, um, at that time, when you started moving around, mm -hmm. you should have probably been in acting school or college or something yeah. like that. Were you uh, well, able to? We were always brought up that you stand up straight and act like hell. And act <laughs> you know, like hell? You, 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 that's the way you learn is you get out there and you actually do it. And so that's what happened with us. I did go to a, a brief time at the, uh, in um, New York City to the Shakespeare Academy. I went there my last year of high school and I liked that better. So I finished high school by mail. Oh, and, you did. and then went off to Stratford, Connecticut to work with Shakespeare. Did yeah. that account for the classics in your background, or was yeah. your father involved in that? Uh, Pop was involved with it, too. Oh. And uh, it's just if you can do the elevated language, you can do anything. Is that, is that the <laughs> That's thought the way behind I feel. it? Yes, yeah. because at, at the uh, Theatricum, at our theater now, which is a, a professional theater in Topanga Canyon, uh, we we have equally the education with the repertory theater. Our actors educate mm -hmm. uh, the different grades you know we go into the Los Angeles school system I know we Talk have them come that. out here thousands of yeah. kids have oh, been yeah. in and out of there mm -hmm. 300 a day <laughs> is that and do they get acting lessons is that? well what they do is they come they, we go to their schools ahead of time oh, we we get them and the teachers prepared then they come out and they see it and then you know they have question answer period and oh, but out of that the teacher said we want more we want more so we created a thing called classroom enrichment, and now we go into schools with our different programs, whether they're Americana history or whether they're Shakespeare or whether it's Homer. <laughs> Who do you get to go into those areas? This is our rep company. It's an oh. extraordinary company because they're interested in educating and passing on what they know. That's sort of, you know, it was Pop's creed, and of course he passed it down to his family, and that's the best thing is to pass on what you know, exactly. especially if it's good and important for the next generation. Exactly. So are these people who were trained um, at the theater yes, at the or theater. different places? No, no, well, they have, they come and then suddenly <coughs> they become a company member. After working with us for a while, they believe in what, what we're doing. And that's very exciting. We've had company members for, oh, for tw you know, 20 years. When you, you talked about your father being blacklisted and you were, tell us a little bit about that 
problem, and then let's go into if it affected you well, as an actress. Oh, well, it, it affected the nation. And um, it's uh, something that we, it was a time when they were taking away freedom of speech. And that's what we have to always be careful of. That's why I hold it and remember it uh, and try and pass it on to others. Uh, not because we went through it. I mean, that was a personal thing that you go through. Learning. Because it's a very important thing and it's easy to shovel it under the rugs. For uh -huh. quite a while, it wasn't even an education. And I'm finding that young people are more and more interested. Um, it, it, it was a time when America was not America, where it was an unpatriotic thing, and it was a pointing finger time, uh, a time when people could not do their best for themselves, for their families and their country. And, and, and that's what happened to your father. Yeah, it happened to Pop. Well, the, the family split up. We became extremely poor. We oh. lived hand to mouth. We oh. lived in parks. That's what I mean by going. You it really a, did, like a homeless family. We were homeless before that word was made up. Exactly. And, um, and, and he was a part of it, too, with yeah. you? Oh, yes, Papa. He was doing his best to make money to feed. And, and at one point, you talk about the house in Santa Monica. And mm -hmm. Santa Monica was so filled. It was an abundance of mm -hmm. rich uh, culture, ta, 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 ta. wasn't mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm, was Who hard. did you, you had, I don't know what the house was. You have to tell us a little bit. About well, it was, it, well, to me, it was, it was just on, in Santa Monica around 26th Street. <laughs> it, it, so it wasn't like, you know, Beverly Hills and all that. But to us, who were country people who had kind of, our childhood was in West Nyack, New York, with Porky and Petunia Pig and the chickens. And so when we came to Hollywood for us to get a brand new quilt, and we each got Schwinn bikes, it was the 50s, you know, the late, uh, late four, or 50s, yeah. And, and Christopher Isherwood was there, yeah. and a lot of, there, weren't yeah. they in Santa Monica, yeah. the uh, literary mm -hmm. types? Yeah, and, and Pop was becoming quite well known as a supporting actor, you know, with Jimmy uh -huh. Stewart and that kind of thing. And so then, uh, then you know, the crash came, and... Uh, so it was very interesting to be brought up during your years just before you're a teen and then when you're a teen on the outside of society. Uh, and the 50s. Because you understood it. You understood Oh, yeah, I could see both ends. And, yeah. and, um, and I saw the country go <coughs> And it was very, very sad. When you finally got back to being a whole <laughs> family, <laughs> did you take acting and directing classes? Directing came by doing. Again. Acting came by doing. I just got jobs. I got my equity card when I was 15. So it did just come from being a part of the family. Oh yeah, we always father. acted. Oh yeah, we always had theaters in the front yard and oh, the backyard, and oh. we always built Shakespeare gardens, and that's just that's what we did. And so that's the what your father then founded this. It's mm -hmm. called Will, the Will Gears. Gears Theatricum Botanicum. Tell yeah. us exactly. It's up in the mountains. It's up in the mountains. <laughs> it's a beautiful large outdoor theater and we also have a smaller theater that the Mark Taper Foundation helped us uh, fund where we do have an academy of the classics there. And oh, now we have why. new plays and we have concert series. We're going to have uh, um, Tom Steinbeck come and talk, which I'm very excited, John Steinbeck's Son, and we're having Sarah Lee Guthrie, who is Woody Guthrie's oh, tell granddaughter. Oh, us about that, because when so, your father first started, Woody Guth Guthrie was up there, right? Oh, yeah, he was up there also, just at the edge of his <clears throat> Huntington's Korea, which was uh -huh. not spelled with a K, it's a C-H, the disease. But Korea was going on at that time. <laughs> <laughs> and who else uh, was up there? Because you did have a lot Pete of big Seeker names. Pete and, and uh, you Pete know. Pete Seeger? Oh, yeah. Uh, what happened is after the blacklist, uh, my mother was very smart, and we moved up to Topanga, you know, where there were just well water. We didn't have city water, you know, oh. and and he created a theater for blacklisted artists. But you had, he bought a lot of land? It was 10 acres. That's a lot no, of no, land. No, no, it was five acres. Excuse me, I got mixed up. It's the $10,000, that's all he paid for. Is that, I was going to say, he had to have been <laughs> yes. like saving. Was he, when he was acting, was he using his real name? During the blacklist time, a lot of those people oh, changed well, their he, names. He was put out of work. Oh, he did, couldn't work at all. That's why the remarkable thing that for 10 years, until Otto Preminger came along and hired him. Oh, yeah. uh, it was 10 years, of, and he went to New York, and he uh, did plays. Because oh. equity did not honor the blacklist. So that's, Screen Actors Guild did. But everyone couldn't do that. A lot of people changed their names. A, a lot, lot of people, people changed their names. The writers were able to change their names and keep their artistry alive. Papa's was limited for 10 oh, years. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So um, 
when you have these concerts, yes, you still have the concerts. Yeah, but we still have the concert. It goes along with our rep theater on the weekend, where we have four plays and repertory. Was it started because of Woody Guthrie being up there and the Pete Seeger, that kind of thing? It's a thing called folk say, and uh, it's something that my father always did. He always had a place for people to write. To, to emote because artistry is really, you know, the politics of life. Artistry is, is very, very important and everybody has something to give out. So you try and make a space for that to happen. Did any of them actually live up there? Was it that kind of a situation where it could be? No, like they, a, would, they would visit. They would just visit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would visit and we'd always have a sleeping bag. Did you watch the painting? But not any kind of program where they would come up no, and collaborate. No, no, no. Pop was an optimist, and Pop was a, a, a wonderful kind of man that he loved everything. And uh, he was a remarkable human being. I am honored that he was my father. Isn't that great? He blows my mind. So does my mother. And I, the gift of their tragic thing became a positive thing because you can understand life and uh, it prepares you for all sorts of things that happen. It's, it's basically, I mean, you, you do a lot of Shakespeare up there. Shakespeare and modern. We have a one, wonderful new play called you have new new Omnium playwrights? Gatham this year. Uh, oh, where I'm very excited by two females, uh, Teresa Rebeck and I just... Oh, I love Teresa Rebeck. Yes, Rebeck's and, work. And, and, um, and then her, I just have to so pronounce it right, uh, Vassilaros. And Omnium Gatherum was written by these two incredible women, and they did it in New York City. And it was right after 9-11. And, and it's like the Last Supper with Martha Stewart, and you have a terrorist, and you have, you know, a famous novelist, and you have all these people talking about these things. I saw that play in New York. How'd you like it? Brilliant. Well, it we're was, doing it. It's a West Coast premiere. I can't <laughs> wait to see it. It yeah. was very interesting. It's it was off piece. Broadway. Yeah, yeah. And it was so well written because everyone written. came ready to go to dinner. That's right. And then all of a sudden, this whole thing explodes. Yeah. It's, and yeah. you can see why it's exploding, because each person's carrying their own baggage. That's right. They're carrying <laughs> their own baggage, and they're trying to relate and trying exactly. to get along. And it, it's a wonderful piece. Oh, I, did, I forgot bright. that was the name of it, because yeah. I was thinking of Theatricum Botanicum. Oh, well, this is fun. Omnium Gatherum in that Theatricum Botanicum. That's what I it's couldn't fun. get. Yes. So tell us how that name came about and what it means. Theater of Plants. Oh, is that it? Yes, my father was a horticulturist. He graduated out of the University of uh, Chicago with a degree, and so his love was plants. So and he theater. had a university degree, mm -hmm. but the kids didn't because <laughs> they didn't have a chance to get one. I mean, yes, but my daughter yes. got one. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, my sister's daughter got one. So we're, we were very proud of that, that there was a little lull, and now, but what is it to get a good degree nowadays. I don't know. but What does I that think mean? You can make more money in a job? No, but I think what you said you did, learning right yeah. on the stage yeah. and learning from parents who knew what they were doing yeah. was really important. Oh, it's extraordinary. You, you talk about the horticulture, though. You're, you said you had a, um, I read in your bio, what? What? <laughs> that there was a farm there and you used to sell farm uh, Oh, yeah. Vegetables. At Topanga, that's how we made our living. We all learned the Latin names and uh, Pop uh, taught us all, and that's it was called Gear Gardens then. Oh, it was. And then we came back after that dark period, and uh, it was a healing place for us all. And now it's grown into the most exciting thing, you know, and it's going to go on. It will go on. My, my own children are in it, and my sister and brother's children. So it's something that will continue. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm so happy about that. Yeah. And the one thing, are you looking for a place where you will be the grandma, like your father was I the grandma. I am a grandma. No, I mean on a TV <laughs> series. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, you know, I find so much that in order to live in this world today, one of the, this is going to sound very strange to you. One of the big things is, is to go in and do a TV because then you can pay for your health insurance. And isn't it sad that this has happened in our country? So maybe we will see Ellen Gear as the grandma. Yeah, I, I just did a, um, a film with uh, Christopher Plummer. It's a wonderful film. I saw it the other day called The Chair. And it's about an old crew member of, uh, in the movies who's kind of an alcoholic, and, and he gets all excited about how to get a young man how to make a film. So again, he's passing it on. He's and just so, what you've been teaching us today. Yeah, yeah he's, re he's remarkable. And the, the, Michael Schroeder was the director, and he's very, very good. They did a wonderful job with it.
And I'm so glad you came and enlightened us today. Oh, oh, thank thank you. you very much for having me. Thank you very me. much. And thanks for watching this part of the Joan Quinn Profiles. We'll be right back with Mark Baer. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm with Mark Baer, who was raised in Denver, graduated with a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Fine Arts in Film Production from the University of Colorado. Mark's film, The Necklace, won a Student Academy Award, and it's still in distribution. He is, aside from filmmaking, a novelist, a screenwriter, and a video producer. You call yourself a word artist. What is that, Mark? <laughs> well, I, I write for the spoken word, I, I should say. As a, as I guess it comes from screenwriting. But uh, I've been in the audiobook industry for some time. And oh. the, uh, it's, how do I explain it? It's, it's a little, I guess it's a, a James Joyceian thing, early childhood. James Joyce exposure, or whatever. But I tend to hear the music of words. I tend to hear uh, words spoken, and it, it just gives you a little different approach when, as a writer. Oh, so so as far as word artist, that means the way you put it on the paper. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. Or the cadence. And then you know it's you know it, it depends how you're applying it. You know, I'll, I can, it sounds like a good thing. I'm not sure quite what it means. <laughs> <laughs> well, you graduated in filmmaking. Did you think you were going to go on and have a career in filmmaking? Uh, I would have liked, I'd still like to go on and have a career in filmmaking. Because you, your uh, films were in a lot of festivals. Yeah, this is, this is many, uh, many years back as a, um, as a student, and I had a lot of, uh, I, it was very ideological. I had ideology about film, and uh, you know, I was young and wanted to do it. And it was the kind of thing where um, had that, had that passion, and then came to Los Angeles, and then had a career where I was working all, all the time and writing movies, but they weren't getting made, and I was making a living, and uh -huh. things weren't getting done. But you were screenwriting, right? Yeah, I was screenwriting, and I was getting paid, but but movies weren't getting made, and and, uh -huh. and it was always felt uh -huh. like. It always felt like I was doing something because the weather was nice and I was always in a meeting and I was always doing this and I'd make enough to make a living. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't happening, you know. In, but is in that the, what happens to people who are screenwriters? Do you think that's a common situation? Um, it, it, it is. I mean, I knew a lot of people. I mean, I, I did fine, you know, and uh, it, it, uh, it was a weird thing. So then I got into writing novels, which is a lot more satisfying. When, when um, one of the things that went to festivals was your uh, minor royalty. Minor, minor royalty. What was that about? That was... Um, that was one of the films you made. Yeah, it was kind of an uh, Ophelia kind of weird thing, girl in a trauma. Uh, it was... Um, what was her name? It's quite qu uh, quite a while ago, but again, we were making it in 16 millimeter and negative, and this is back when everything used to be so expensive, and it it was it was. But it, you had it, really important. I mean, Billy Zane was in one of the movies. Well, the Billy Zane was in Pascal Franchot's movies. That was the uh, Heartbreak City that I and was you one of the on I that. was one of the writers, and I don't know if that got to. Um, um, I don't know if that got to, Naomi Watts was in it. Um, Is that right? Uh, yeah, a lot of people, and and and, and Pascal's a, a a very good director. And but again, it's one of those projects that went out, and then I don't know if the world, you know, sees these things. It, and that uh, that was the end of Hollywood for me. Was it? That yeah, was that, like that, that, was, that was pretty much it. Because yeah. you like to see something. <laughs> yeah, well, because I, you know, I wanted to make things and and get them seen, you know, and it was this kind of weird, strange, but, cliche but did, life. Did that? Then did the magazine career come after that? No, I always wrote for for magazines. Oh, you always did. But it, tell us, you were writing columns and I wrote columns. I, I wrote um, ongoing series. Uh, I worked. Uh, I did, and I don't like magazine work either because they don't, <laughs> you know, they don't pay you enough for how how hard a work it is. 
People don't realize yeah, that it, because yeah. they think a journalist has a really easy life. Right. But there's so much research and you have to be on top of what you're yeah. doing. And then I had a, uh, at, at one point I had an internet company that we hired writers. And, and I was kind of the editor where I got to hire writers. And then, you know, you, you, you just assume, you, you take on the air of the editor and then, you know, writers become a dime a dozen and you're just, you know. Because there's so many people wanting to make their career. Yeah, it was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I wanted to be a writer. You know, when you're <laughs> starting to hire these people and <laughs> write. And, and, you know, unfortunately I was, you know, always very nice to writers because I knew what it was about. But I could never pay them enough. I can never I know, pay them enough for the work. Yeah, you don't think that you're that they're getting paid enough for their work. They're not getting paid they, enough. They're not. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's. Uh, I know. It's like a school teacher in a way. It's like people that are so necessary to our everyday lives. And yeah. uh, well, I hope school teachers get a little more satisfaction. Well, writers get satisfaction. Didn't you always like to see your work in print? I always did. If yeah, it was I liked, published, yeah. I liked I hate, to see it. I hated it. writing, loved having written, That's right. like Oscar Wilde would say. One of the things that I think was probably a really interesting thing for you was marketing for a jewelry company. To me, I, that would have been really interesting. Right. I worked with uh, my ex-wife, who was Catherine Post at the time, who's Esmeralda Gordon now. Who's oh, she changed her name because Catherine Post was a great name. She, she was um, very successful in the '80s. Started the cubic zirconian look, and oh, uh, she did. One was uh, one of the one of the the uh, starters of that. And she's then changed her her name and her look and her design, and she's now in Wilkes Bashford up north and around the country, and uh, starting a chocolate company. So, what kind of work was she doing? Uh, she must have been working in Colored Stones because you were well, at the time, in Thailand at, 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 a lot. At the time, yeah, she was, we were in Thailand a lot. At, at that time, um, she was doing these great big pieces and we had, you know, the fashion world's really fascinating. That, that was a, a really fascinating world and uh, she was in the high end of uh, jewelry design. Was that easy for you being a writer to go Yeah, and, 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 I, and I was also fascinated with the, with the marketing of that and that's where we <coughs> met with, with at interview and stuff because we used to basically that was the time. Oh when, and Andy Warhol, that's yeah, when we knew the, Catherine Post. Right, and, and uh, interview was um, the, kind of the great venue to be um, showing new product. Exactly. Into cutting edge product. It, those were, you know, those were interesting days. The, so that the was days, fun for you. Th that was fun for me, and it was also, it was real interesting. T you know, so I learned a lot about marketing, and uh, that's uh, I, oh. the Warhol days, you call them. Yeah. But were you? Did you work with Interview? Were you working with us a lot? Uh, I was. <laughs> did I see you a lot? <laughs> yeah, I, I was around that, uh, that <laughs> those days a lot. Because uh, we had always new photographers, people who were looking for new, different ways to do, to express Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was really an interesting, creative time. But we had the, um, you know, I was here a long time ago. I was here during the At Sunset years, uh -huh. uh, which was kind of the equivalent of, uh, oh, right. you know, and we had this, uh, At, At Sunset was kind of a historic, uh, it's where Dukes used to be at, at one time. And... Um, Everybody passed through there, and we we filmed it all and videoed it all. And uh, oh. the, I mean, the, the archives of that is still being worked out. To uh, do you still have that? Y yeah, Jim Budman has that. And oh, so we, you it, were working with Jim, oh, right? Of so that was uh, he I mean, was from Canada. I, I mean, I yeah, met so, Jim in New York too. Yeah. So I mean, I, I remember uh, Basquiat there. I remember you know uh, Gene Kelly there. I remember Timothy Leary tending bar oh, there. I right. mean, it was you know it was at sunset. That was quite the that was quite a scene at, at that time. Did that lead you into the audio book on, online kind of thing? No, but that. Uh, but that's my, a, uh, I have a novel called Sunset Strip that. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Uh, yeah, of. that is captures that day. So, and that's just released, re-released by Blackstone Audiobooks. So. And then we have. Then we have Kooks. Then we have Kooks, which. Okay. Kooks is. When I re-met you, you were writing Kooks again. Tell right. us about Kooks. Okay, this is. Breakfast at Tiffany's and Lost Horizon, 1930s Hollywood musical, and the Dada Surrealist movement kind of rolled together if I was going to do the one line on it. And is this, it going to be a movie? Is it going to be a movie? Well, hopefully someone <laughs> out there, it should be. Uh, Jamie Cohn did the uh, performance. Um, Jamie Cohn's kind of a legendary Hollywood character, too. He's been around a long time uh, music producer and uh, a great voice artist. So. Uh, he, he's wonderful oh, to work with. on the audio, on the book, on yeah. the... Arthur Barrow produced it, who was um, uh, oh, I want to talk about legendary. the cover. Uh, James, James Mather, Mather did, the, did, the uh, cover. did the cover work. 
Right. And he did the beautiful painting on the set. And he did this drawing of me as yeah. well. He, you've worked with him in the Topanga Poets uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell project. you a couple of things. Uh, I've worked with James Mathers for over 20 years. He's a, you know, I mean, he's a magical artist. And we've been doing these things called animatics. Yeah, and if you go to woofco.tv, you can see some of our, our, our work. But I'd like to, I, I, there's nothing that I, of, of anything creative that I like doing as much as, as working with him and doing these kind of, not quite children's stories, but they're kind of, I, I guess what he does is we do live picture with, with words, so. Oh, and the words. But in North Carolina, you started doing a TV show, and you right. started using James, you work, used James Mather's work on your. O on the TV on show. On your TV show, which was a, a public access show. Yeah, it's public access. I shot in a public access studio, studio yeah, and then to be an internet show. It could be, yeah. So um, what we're waiting for now is to have Kooks be a movie. We're waiting for Kooks to be a movie, and I want to do the, uh, I did 13 episodes of uh, the show called The Mr. Bear Show, and I worked with a fellow named Tom Maxwell who started a man called The Squirrel Nut Zippers. He's a great songwriter, and I worked with a, a man named Louis St. Louis, who is oh, kind of the right. Andy Warhol of the South. He's a really... That was all in North Carolina. That was in North Carolina. We, sh we shot this thing. It was nonfiction storytelling and, and, and video art, and that was a lot, a lot, a lot of fun, and that's Can a direction I would that? like to do. Yeah, and I'd like to continue it in, in a much bigger way. I love uh, Henry Rollins' show. I, I love right. what Henry Rollins is doing on, I guess it's on the Independent Film Channel. And then I saw Laurie Anderson up in, in Big Sur in a very stripped down show doing kind of storytelling with video art oh, so. and, and, and music. And I mean, she's the best. And so that's the idea of where I'd like to be going. So that's where we are with you. Yeah, that's where we and are. And we're with glad me. you came on to tell us about it. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks to Mark Bear. Thanks to you for watching the Joan Quinn, Quinn Profiles. Keep riding to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles 90017. See you next time.